All right, what's up? Are you ready? Today's a big day. I actually have to run upstairs and get dressed for our Memorial Day ceremony. Last week, I was preaching to our church about taking Jerusalem, taking your home city for the gospel, and then Monday or Tuesday, I got a call from Town Hall, and they were asking if I would do the invocation and benediction for today's Memorial Day service. I am so honored. Thank you so much, Mayor Frazier. You're a blessing. We are excited as the Victory House. We are excited to see God move in this community. How exciting is that? I have to go because I think I have to still iron my clothes. So I'm going to go do that real quick. And here we go. Jesus is King. Amen. All right, got to go. Frappuccino. So do you. You look beautiful as well. Hi. I gotta go. Give me a kiss before you go. Love you. 66 degrees. It's gonna be a great day. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for peace right now. Peace. I thank you for this community as we're, as we're even just driving through this community, God, that this is a place that's gonna be a site of a major end time revival. I used to get really nervous at these things, but the Lord is so faithful. You just trust him and you go through with it. And sometimes nerves are not a bad thing, but the most important thing is not with eloquence of speech, not with persuasive words, but the demonstration of the spirit's power. So even in the way that we have two minutes basically to articulate a prayer, we are able to we are able to craft a mini sermon in that prayer. Going into Fireman's Field, I'm praying that this is going to be the site of a great revival, a great move of God. Let's park here. That's where we're going. This guy. <laughs> Journey continues. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Wonderful. military for the freedom for our freedom throughout all ages we are reminded that greater love had no one than this that one shall lay down his life or her life for friends we also have the assurance that blessed are they that mourn for they shall they shall be comforted with that said at this moment let our hearts hold firm to amazing grace and unfailing love and I'd like to introduce Pastor Nick Copaletis of the Victory House Church, who will give us the invocation. Let's give him a warm welcome. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we humbly come to you today, not just to remember the lives of the living, but the living who have laid down their lives. We are gathered together under this glorious, glorious flag in which selfless generations of brave men and women have forfeited their strength of their days in order to keep the beacon of liberty burning bright in a dark and evil world. We are reminded of the Pledge of Allegiance that so eloquently states that we are one nation under God. We continue to acknowledge that we are one nation under God, not above nor beside, but under your sovereign authority and in need of your power, your love, and your divine wisdom. The colors of old glory, our nation's flag, are a vivid reminder that the value of the blood that was shed is only promoted by the way we choose to represent and express the cause of freedom and justice in this present day. White is for purity and innocence. Red is for hardiness and valor. Blue 
is for vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Lord, enable us by your spirit to live out these values of this free society. Lord, we also humbly ask you that in this ceremony, as we remember the lives of the fallen, would you raise our hearts to transcend the quarrels that attempt to divide this great nation? Like those brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, the loved ones who spilt their precious blood in defense of this great union, the bullet, the bomb, the terror of death, knew no color of skin, no economic class, did not recognize the rights of the broken or the liberties of the oppressed. This evil tyranny that brings the wrath of injustice is the opposing force to the unstoppable strength of liberty and justice for all. So Lord, empower us to live as a beacon of truth and liberty. And may we remember that those that died before us, may we remember them in order that the freedom may live beyond us. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us pray. Once again, we humbly lift our hearts to you and thank you for the preservation of the United States of America, for your gracious hand of mercy and the willing sacrifice of multitudes of courageous individuals. We are reminded that the cost of freedom is not paid by those who enjoy its great benefits, but by those who have fought, as well as those who have died for its promotion. This cost at times is more than we can bear. Yet willing individuals in every generation have responded to the call of freedom with courageous, selfless, voluntary acts of bravery by dedicating themselves to the ideals of liberty. Father, you know all too well the cost and the resolve needed to bring freedom to all mankind. In the greatest, most selfless act in the history of humanity, you sent your son Jesus to pay the penalty of our sins. These sins that we willingly committed against you you willingly committed to lay down your life as a substitution and a payment for our penalty. The scripture declares that you love the world so much that you gave your one and only son Jesus, that whoever believes in him will not die but have everlasting life. Jesus, thank you for modeling what we are memorializing today. As it says in the book of John, greater love has no one than this, than he would lay down his life for his friends. So Lord, we ask you that you would bring a spiritual awakening and revival to our town, county, and nation so that all may know and experience true freedom which is found in Jesus Christ alone. 
Let us conclude this prayer with the sacred words of our 16th President Abraham Lincoln in his Gettysburg Address. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to the cause which they gave their last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and the government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from this earth. We pray these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. As we leave this day of celebrating freedom and mourning the loss of those who have made their ultimate sacrifice, I would like to share with you a quote. The author is unknown, but these words, when I first heard them, when I first saw them, made a movement in my heart. Our flag does not fly because the wind moves it. It flies with the last breath of each soldier who died protecting it. Thank you all for joining us on this Memorial Day.